<clears throat> okay, Sirach, chapter 6. Do not, okay, chapter 6, verse 1. And do not become an enemy instead of a friend, for a bad name incurs shame and reproach. So it is with a double-edged sword, sinner, double-tongued sinner. <clears throat> verse 2. Do not fall into the grip of passion, or you may be torn apart as by a bull. Your leaves will be devoured, and your fruit destroyed, <clears throat> and you will be left like a withered tree. Every passion destroys those who have it, and makes them the laughing stock of their enemies. <clears throat> Excuse me. A pleasant speech multiplies friends, and a gracious tongue multiplies courtiers. Let those who are friendly with you be many, and let your advisors be one in a thousand. That means don't listen to the advice of everybody. Have a lot of friends, but not many people who give you advice. When you gain friends, gain them through testing, and do not trust them hastily. <clears throat> Man, I got the hiccups here. For there are friends who are such when it suits, suits them, <laughs> but they will not stand by you in times of trouble. And there are friends who change into enemies and tell of the quarrel and tell of the quarrel of your disgrace and there are friends who sit at your table and they will not stand by you but they will not stand by you in times of trouble when you are prosperous they become your second self that means oof Water will help. Oh, stop breathing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Go get me some water, Caleb. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, let me read this to you, Tate. And you tell me what this means. <coughs> when you are prosperous, these friends, they will become your second self and lord it over your servants. Like when you... But if you're brought low, maybe this will help you. But if you're brought low, they turn against you and hide themselves from you. Like you get a JJ. Oh boy. Thank you, kid. Let's see if I can drown these hiccups. Let's see, then I have a scientific question for you. Okay. So, anyways, these friends, <clears throat> when you have much, they're like your second self. But when um, you lose your money, they turn against you and hide themselves from you. Keep away from your enemies and be on your guard with your friends. So, the bottom line is this. You have friends when you have money. Everybody wants to be your friend. 
when you don't have money, those same people you call because you need help. Like, I need help. We don't have any money. Can you give me some food? And, and they're nowhere to be found. So try not to have friends like that. <laughs> that are your confidants and helpers like that. You know, we take care of everybody, but they're not all your deep, intimate friends. Faithful friends are a sure, sh are a sturdy shelter. Whoever finds one who has, whoever finds one, has found a treasure. Faithful friends are beyond price. No amount can balance their worth. Faithful friends are life-saving medicine, and those who fear the Lord will find them. Those who fear the Lord direct their friendships aright. <clears throat> For as they are, so are their neighbors also. My child, your, from your youth, choose discipline. Hear this, buddy? From your youth, choose discipline. And when you have gray hair, you will still find wisdom. Come to her like one who plows and sows and waits for a good harvest. That means work it. Work hard. Work hard to gain wisdom, and you will have it. <clears throat> for when you cultivate her, you will toil but little, and soon you will eat of her produce. Like if you work at getting wisdom, even just a little, you start working a little, then you will get wisdom. You'll get something to to eat from from that labor. She seems very harsh to the undisciplined. Fools cannot remain with her. She will be like a heavy stone to test them, and they will not delay in casting her aside. For wisdom is like her name. She is not readily perceived by many. Like, people don't want wisdom. Listen, my child, and accept my judgment. Do not reject my counsel. Put your feet into her fetters. Whose fetters? What does that mean when your feet are in fetters? They're, st <clears throat> they're stuck. Like, Why would somebody put your feet in fetters? Because they're being disciplined. No. Because you are their slave. Right? Oh, I thought fetters were the things that you had to stick your feet into. When fetters are like things that go around your ankles that are hooked to chains, so you can't get away. The point like here, oh, <clears throat> like handcuffs. The point is, uh, put your feet into her fetters, and your neck into her <coughs> collar. Bend your shoulders and carry her, and do not fret under her bonds. Come to her with all your soul, and keep her ways with you with all your might. Why? Become her slave is what he's saying. Like, give yourself totally to gain wisdom. Gain wisdom. Think. Learn. Ask. Work at it. Memorize. Discipline yourself. I've got to stop doing that. I've got to put my hand over my mouth. I'm not going to look that. I'm not going to say any words. Discipline yourself. Make yourself a slave to her. Come to her with all your soul and keep her, keep her ways with all your might. Se search out and seek, and she will become known to you. And when you get hold of her, do not let her go. For at last you will find the rest she gives, and she will be changed into joy for you. Then her fetters will become to you like a strong defense, and her collar like a glorious robe. Her yoke is a golden ornament, and her bonds a purple cord. You will wear her like a glorious robe, and put her on like a, splen like a splendid crown. That is what happens after you discipline yourself with wisdom. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, and then all of a sudden, you don't even know when it happens. All of a sudden, it's like, wow, this is wonderful. This is great. You're learning stuff. 
and you're able to apply it and it's beneficial to your life. If you are willing, my child, you can be dis dis disciplined. You can be disciplined. And if you apply yourself, you will become clever. Like this, like people like, I can't discipline myself. And this is like you choosing to like, I remember when I was a boy and I wanted to do, di um, wanted to get strong. And so I would do sit-ups. And I would do so many sit-ups a day, like 250 or something. And I remember some days I would wake up and I'd be like, oh, I can't do this today. And, and what we would say is, <clears throat> oh no, I'm not being disciplined. I'm not doing the things that it needs to take to get done. Or other times people would say to me, boy, you're really disciplined. You wake up on time. Every time, every morning, you discipline yourself to do these certain things. That's what it takes, but you have to choose to do this to get with it. Does that make sense? If you don't choose this, are you listening to me, guys? You don't get this. If you don't choose that, you will not find her. But he's saying, like, you can do it. My child, you can be disciplined. And if you apply yourself, you will become clever. If you love to listen, you will gain knowledge, and if you pay attention, you will become wise. Stand in the company of the elders. Who is wise? Attach yourself to such a one. Be ready to listen to every godly discourse. Can you put that thing away from my face? Thanks. Be ready to listen to every godly discourse and let no wise proverb escape you. If you see an intelligent person, rise early to visit him. Let your foot wear out his doorstep. Reflect on the status of the Lord and meditate all the time on his commandments. It is he who will give insight to your mind and your desire for wisdom will be granted. Okay, God bless you all. Bye-bye.